Hi everyone and welcome to Bull Python Breeder UK. In today's video we're going to cover a topic which is 100% essential if you want to breed ball pythons and that is how do you tell if your ball python is male or female? So like kind of every single snake related topic on the internet you'll find a lot of sites with uh, lists of various different methods and maybe sort of three out of five of the most popular methods are completely useless. <laughs> so what we're going to do in today's video is look at it from a zoological perspective and tell you, go through each method and tell you which ones actually work and which ones are complete nonsense. So the first one that I see on every big site, which is uh, mostly written by people who don't actually keep snakes, uh, is tail width and tail size. So there's a really long-standing myth to do with ball pythons that you can look at the tail size and tell if a male, um, if it's a male or female, because males have bigger, broader, longer tails. And what actually happened here was there was a little bit of knowledge that got spread around related to colubrids, like corn snakes, and that somehow passed over to the bull python scene. So colubrids like uh, corn snakes, king snakes, milk snakes, and a lot of your other really popular smaller pet snakes um, are easy to tell apart, male and female, just by looking at the tail. The males have longer, broader tails, and a corn snake breeder could uh, literally look at corn snakes and tell you their gender of adults um, within a few seconds by looking at their tails. And with colubrids, that's absolutely foolproof. But with ball pythons, because they're so variable in size, weight, um, body proportions, um, looking at the size of the tails, it just doesn't work. It really doesn't. They're, they're stocky enough, they're fat enough to have their sex organ, organs hidden inside their tail, hidden within the fat and the, the meat of the tail so well that you could never tell if it's a male or female. So really, if you're looking to tell the sex of your snakes, completely ignore tail width for bull pythons and most other pythons in general. Uh, kind of related, um, but still on the sexual dimorphism theme, is spur size. So spur size basically, um, I say it's on the sexually dimorphic um, theme because Male pythons have been observed using their spurs, their cloacal spurs, which are the vestigial remnants of hide legs, um, to tickle females, to stimulate them, and to try and tickle them into breeding, basically, um, which may or may not work, but it's, it's something that the males do do. Um, and the, the, the idea is that because males use their spurs, um, that they'll have larger spurs, and in some boas and some pythons, that, that does seem to be generally the case. Um, but again, with ball pythons, they're so variable that they've only got this kind of broad sexual dimorphism. There's no real set physical differences between male and female. So, like you can see in the photos that I'm, I'm putting up now, um, the top photo is a female with a really large uh, cloacal spur. Um, like many people would tell you the males should have. Uh, she's also got a broad, fat tail. Um, so that busts both of the myths at once. And then the next photo, you can see a male with smaller cloacal spurs than the female. So again, um, the size of the cloacal spurs seems to vary between individuals and between male and females, and seems to be pretty much independent of sexual dimorphism. Um, and what you also need to consider with uh, spurs is that if the snake um, has a difficult shed or two, sometimes the spurs literally just pop off. So you can get a snake with one average size spur and no spur on the other side. Uh, and then you have no idea, you know, if that was an indicator of male or female, you'd have no idea from that anyway. So again, spur size is another myth. So just completely ignore that too don't bother. And just before we move on to the next one, 
what I forgot to mention at the start is another method which is actually foolproof is genetic testing. So before trying any of the next ones, which I'm, I'm getting to last because they're the most effective methods, um, do get genetic testing if you've just got one pet snake and you just want to know what sex it is. It'll cost you maybe $50 US, maybe £30 UK. Um, you'll get the results within a, about three or four weeks and the results are probably 99.999% um, correct. So really with genetic testing there is no, no issue whatsoever. That will be a definite result. Uh, the only drawback is that it's it's expensive in some areas and it's not widely available yet. I know it's available in the UK and the US. Canada, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about sending sheds in the post across borders. So that is something to research um, with regards to your state or province laws uh, and check that out. Now, when it comes to the first of the kind of the three accurate methods um, the least accurate but sometimes accurate is body size um, so again they are sexually dimorphic they're just only broadly sexually dimorphic so um, as with a lot of egg laying species you see the female ball pythons being on average maybe anywhere from 10 to 30 percent larger than the males you might get a, a thousand gram male and you might get a uh, a 1500 gram female and they'd both be considered completely normal um, and this is you know the reason behind this is obvious the they don't live in a social structure where the males don't have have to protect the females so all the males have to do is fight each other there's no point in them being bigger than the females and the females on the other hand they do want to be a bit bigger because they want to have lots of eggs and they need room within their body cavity so um Generally, yes, male ball pythons do tend to be smaller than females, but again, um, because they vary so much, you can't actually rely on this one. It gives you a general idea. Um, if you've got a, you know, a thousand gram adult snake that just barely reaches three feet in length, um, you know, most of the time it will be a male. Uh, likewise, if you've got a five foot long snake, which is weighing 3000 grams plus, um, you know, it's likely it'll be a female. But again, this doesn't always hold true, so you can't rely on it 100%. So I've actually got a couple of examples here. Um, the first example is Bobby, who is a 13-year-old male. He's a definite proven male. And i just get him out here. Bobby is a large male. You know, he's not small. He's not 900 grams or 800 grams as a lot of websites would tell you. He's quite a chunky guy. He's over three foot and he's, he's probably around 1800 grams. So, you know, this is bigger than a lot of people would tell you males get. Um, he's not the biggest male I've got either. I've got one that's over four foot long and um, they can get just as large if not larger than females, it just depends on the on the individual because they are such a variable species. If they weren't so variable, we wouldn't get all the morphs, we wouldn't get the variations in colour and pattern, and they wouldn't be as popular as they are. So that's an extra large male. And then when it comes to females, if I can manage to get her out, I've also got a an albino clown female here who is around six years old, I think, maybe six or seven years old. And she's about 500 grams lighter than Bobby. And she just barely reaches three foot in total length. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with her. She's a healthy weight. She's um, feeding fine. It's just that some individuals are smaller than others. So the idea that you could take, uh, you know, two adult bull pythons and tell their sex with 100% certainty by size is, is, is not correct. It's just um, a little bit risky. If you rely on that, you're going to have some issues. Let's just put her back. So by now, um, you're probably wondering about the accurate methods. Um, 
or what I consider to be the most accurate methods, and that is popping and probing. So we're going to take a look at probe, uh, popping now, um, and that's it's a pretty straightforward thing to do. It's reasonably safe, but you have to get the knack of it. You have to, you know, get into the habit of doing it. You have to learn how to do it, and um, at first you might not be very good at it, but you just have to practice and get with it over time. Okay, so to pop a snake, first we're going to look at a female. And you'll be able to tell it's female in a minute because nothing's really going to come out. Um, but again, this is something you do carefully and gently. If the snake's not relaxed or it's fighting too much, you'll just have to wait. Basically, you take the tail, get it to relax, put your thumb by the vent, wait for the camera to focus too, always helps, um, and then you put pressure on the tail, just a few scales below the vent, and what you get in a female is two white nubs, which are hard to see. I'm not hurting her, by the way. This doesn't cause them any pain. Um, and those two white nubs are scent glands. For a male, it's the same process. Um, so this is a, a proven male. And like I say, I know something's in there uh, and I know something's gonna come out. But even if you don't know, it's the same process. Um, you get the tail, get it to relax. And with a lot of males, adults, you can just put pressure on like that and the hemipenes will come out. Uh, you can see the purple one is out fully. It looks disgusting, but that is how you're gonna tell if it's a male or a female. Um, and the purple coloration is really important. Because if it's purple, you know that tissue is a hemipeny. Right, now when it comes to probing, I'm not actually going to do a full uh, probe on this snake here, or any in this video, in fact. I'm going to do a full video on it at a later date. Um, but I can show you basically what the procedure is. So, this is a male. Um, and in males, the hemipenes are located inside the tail, as we've just seen, obviously. And they're located within a pocket that runs to the lateral side on each side of the vent going into the tail. So basically, <laughs> this guy is in a combative mood today. Um, so basically what you do is you choose a probe of the appropriate size, not too thin or too thick. You ideally get someone to help you restrain the snake. You put water-based lubricant on the probe and then you'll insert it from the side of the vent and then into the tail and when it goes into the tail you put your finger on it so this would go about that far for him and then you take it out with your finger still in place and then you would measure how many subcaudal scales deep it went into the tail and the deeper it goes the more likely it is for a male the male would be typically around um, a male like this, it would probably go to around nine subcaudals deep. But eight to nine, you're going to say it's definitely a male. Most females are shallow, so they only go to three or four subcaudals deep. But I have seen them go as deep as six or seven. So, like I say, eight or nine and above, it's definitely a male. Now, as you've just seen with probing, um, I've not done a full video on probing here because that is a little bit more involved. It's a little bit more risky for the snake if you do it wrong. Um, and I think that deserves a whole video that takes you through it with a few males and females and kind of, um, you know, gives you a lot, of, a lot of stuff to study. So, but what I would say is that the method that herpetologists and veterinarians usually go for is probing and that is overall the most effective method. Popping is reasonably um, effective if you got the hang of it. There's breeders who swear by it 100%, um, but there is the occasional male that is very hard to pop. Uh, and I have one called Jerry, who's an acid pastel, and he is almost impossible to pop. Um, he's very muscular, very slim for a ball python, 
and if I really really tried to to get him to pop it would be applying more pressure than I really like to on a on an animal and it would run the risk of hurting him so in situations like that the only alternative is to probe um, and that is kind of when you get good at probing it is very very accurate in my experience so my in conclusion my advice is if you want to sex one ball python that's a pet it's not for breeding but you just want to know then i just get genetic testing um, and you know for certain and you don't do anything that's going to risk your snake however if you want to breed your ball pythons you will need to learn popping probing or both if you want to breed them completely ignore tail size spur size body size and get good at popping or probing uh, the best solution for this is watch videos like I make watch videos from other channels too um, but the best thing overall is if you can get in touch with a local breeder and ask for help doing it and have someone show you uh, I absolutely did not learn to do popping and probing on my own I had one breeder teach me how to pop my snakes and I had another breeder teach me how to probe um, and since then I've been doing it myself so really that is you know the be all end all the best way to tell if your ball python is male or female is to learn to probe and pop and get help with it if possible um, if you do attempt it yourself and you're not feeling it you can't manage to get the snake to sit still or you feel like you're putting on too much pressure on the snake um, just drop it just don't worry about it forget it um, forget it until you get help when you get help you'll see that it's not so hard it's it's literally just a, a thing to to be shown a couple of times um, but these snakes live 20 30 years and if you're breeding them you might have some of your best breeders um, produce 10 15 20 clutches for you over the years um, so there really is no rush if you don't get them sexed right away get them sexed in six months two months whenever you can get someone to help you but you will you will get help quite easily and you will figure it out as well um, once you've been shown so all in all i hope this has been a helpful video for you please do like and subscribe and get in touch and ask what else uh, you'd like me to do what else you'd like me to cover and i will get it covered as soon as possible Thanks.